most amazing artists and welcome back to your paper birdhouse project. All right, this is a week three of our project. Last time we should have created the loom for our weaving. So we learned that we are going to make our birdhouse into a weaving or make it out of a weaving however you want to look at it. All right, so we took our brown textured piece of paper and we created a loom. Notice how it's all in one piece. There's just some cuts in it. And remember the loom is what holds the whole weaving all together. Okay, so this is very important when creating a weaving. So you definitely need this. You will also need some kind of colored paper. Now, I am an art teacher. There's a lot of painted paper laying around my art room, so I'm going to use that. As you can see, it's just painted on there, just random colors like this. Okay, you can make your own colored paper like these are, or you can just use construction paper. Um, you could color a piece of paper with crayons in a cool design. Okay, so as long as you have some paper that is a different color than brown, and that's not just white or black, we want it to be colorful like these paintings are, um, then go ahead and do that. And the last two things that you're going to need are a pair of scissors and some glue. All right, so go ahead and gather your materials. Before we get started, let's go ahead and say our class mantra all together on the count of three. One, two, three three. My mantra, I am positive, I am creative, I am mindful, I am amazing, I am an artist. All right, good job my friends, let's go. All right, so I have my loom here. This is what we made last time. And I have a colored piece of paper. This is just a painted piece of paper, painted with random colors. Um, if you don't have paint and you can't paint your own piece of paper, then guys, you can just color another piece of paper using crayons, markers, colored pencils, whatever you have at home, okay? And we're gonna need this because this piece of paper is going to turn into our weft pieces, okay? If you watched our mini lesson, then you know all about those. All right, so first I'm just gonna set my loom off to the side and I need to cut this colored piece of paper into strips. We wanna cut it into strips, but we don't want our strips to be too skinny and we don't want them to be too fat either. We want it to be about a finger width or if you have teeny tiny fingers, you could do two fingers width. And that's how wide our strips should be. So I have flipped my paper horizontally. That means it's going from side to side. Um, this is vertical when it's going up and down. So I want mine to be side to side, okay? So flip yours horizontally so we're on the same page. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take our scissors. Remember to have great scissor safety while you're doing this. And I'm just gonna start at the bottom, making sure my strip's not too skinny or too fat. If it's too skinny, then our paper might rip because it'll be really fragile. But if it's too fat, then we might not have enough pieces to create that beautiful checkerboard pattern that we are going for, okay? So I'm just gonna start at the bottom and cut upwards. All right, so I have one strip done. weft pieces. Those are the pieces that are going to create the over and under pattern on our loom. Okay, these pieces are what create that cool checkerboard pattern and they are called the weft pieces. Okay, and if you notice not all of mine are exactly the same width. Some are a little bit skinnier, some are a little bit fatter and that is totally fine. They also don't have to be perfectly straight. Okay, just try your best. The most important thing is that they're not really skinny strips and they're not super fat strips either, okay? So these are pretty good. After you cut your strips, you do not need scissors anymore so we can put those away in a safe place 
and we can bring our loom back in the picture, okay? So, this is where things get a little bit tricky, okay? But it'll be really helpful if you follow along with me while we do this, all right? Um, try not to get ahead of me, and uh, if you need to pause the video to catch up to me, then you can do that as well. That's the great thing about having a video, is that you can just go back and forth to anything that you may have missed, or you can fast forward through the things that you already know, okay? So, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna take a weft piece, just one piece. Move my others off to the side because we're just gonna work with one at a time. And I like to weave from right to left. I know it's a little bit weird since in America we read from left to right. I don't know why, I just learned to weave from right to to left, okay? But this is your opportunity to figure out if you prefer weaving from right to left or if you prefer weaving from left to right. But for me, I like to start on the right side, so that is what I'm going to do. All right, and our pattern is an over-under pattern. You can start over or you can start under, but once you choose one, you are committed to that, okay? So I think for me, the first one, I'm just gonna go under. Doesn't really matter. So I just picked up that first piece on my loom and I put my weft piece, that's the pieces that we just cut, under that piece on my loom, okay? Since it's an over-under pattern, if I went under first, then for the next piece here, I'm gonna go over. And then I'm gonna pick up go under and then over pick up my next piece go under this one's gonna be over so the next one will be under all right very good once you get to the end you don't want to pull it through anymore because then we're just undoing our weaving we're undoing what we just did Okay, so we want to keep it in place. So we're gonna just stop right when we get to the end. There's something very important that you have to do every time you put a new weft piece in. And that is we have to bring it down to the bottom of our weaving, okay? And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take my two thumbs. They're gonna be pressed down at the bottom. I'm gonna take my fingers up here. They're gonna carefully scooch that weft piece all the way down to the bottom until it has nowhere else to go, okay? And I kind of want my weft pieces to line up with the edge of my loom here, okay? So I just moved it down and it can't go any further so I'm not gonna force it because I don't want to rip anything. Remember this is paper, so it is fragile, okay? And that's it for our first weft piece. Now we're gonna take another weft piece. Just one at a time. For the next piece that you put in, it has to do the opposite of what this piece did. Okay, and let me show you how that works. So, since over here I started, the first thing I did right here is I went under. Then I went over, under, over, under, and continued my pattern all the way around. Now, this one has to be the opposite. So since I started under here, this weft piece needs to start over. So I'm going to put it over that first piece, pull up my second piece, go under, all right, over, pull up the next piece, under, over, pull up the next piece, under, over, and under. We know that we did it right because when we pull this piece downwards, it stops right on top of the last one that we did, okay? If we didn't do the opposite for our second one, this is what would have happened. So let me show you what happens when you do the same thing as the last one you just did. So the last one I went over, so I'll just copy exactly what I just did. Over, under, over, under, over, under, okay? So if you mess up, this is what's gonna happen. If you do the same thing again, you don't do the opposite. This 
is going to want to slide either behind that weft piece or it's going to want to slide over. In this case, this one is wanting to slide behind. And that's not correct because we want our weft pieces to sit right on top of each other like these ones are. We don't want them to fall behind each other or fall in front of each other, okay? So that is why we always do the opposite of the last one that we just did, okay? So for this one, the first thing I did was under. For this one, the first thing I did was over. So does anyone know what comes next for my next left piece? Do I start over or do I start under? Hmm, what do you think? If you said under, then you can give yourself a pat on the back. Good job. We need to do the opposite of the last one that we did. So I'm going to go under first, over the next one, under, over this one, pull up to go under, over, under, over. All right. Can I move on to the next weft piece now? Or is there something else I need to do? Ooh, you're right. I need to hold my loom down with my thumbs at the bottom and use my fingers to carefully pull it down until it can't go down anymore. Okay, we know we got it right if this piece just sits right on top of the last piece we did. It doesn't go behind it and it doesn't go in front of it. Very good. All right, I'm going to do one more with you guys and then I'm going to go ahead and finish weaving this. So for my next weft piece, Let's look at this pattern over here that we've started. First I went under, then I went over, then I went under. So what does this one do first? What does he do first? Does he go over first or under first? Hmm. Ah, yes, he goes over because this one right here, it went under first. So we you know our next one does the opposite. So it's gonna go over first, okay? Then, under, over, under, over, under, over, and under again. All right, after you get done weaving one of your weft pieces, what do we do? Take your thumb, press them down at the bottom of your loom and use your fingers to carefully pull that weft piece down. All right, and it sits right on top of my last one, so I know that I am correct. All right, you'll also know that you are correct if you start seeing this really cool checkerboard pattern appearing, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and finish weaving this whole entire thing, and I'm gonna bring you with me so you can see what I'm doing as I do it, and then I'll be right back to wrap up this video. getting a little bit trickier as I get up to the top because I have less room in my loom to weave, okay? So I just wanna make sure, and it's a really good idea for you to do this as well, go back to all of your weft pieces and just carefully pull them downwards, okay? Even though I pulled them down after I got done weaving them in my loom, they like to move around sometimes. So at the end, or towards the end, we wanna make sure they're all as far down as they possibly can, okay? Because then it'll give us a little bit more room to finish our weaving up here, okay? And it's a little bit trickier because it's harder to pull up on our loom where we need to go under, but just take your time. This is paper, so we wanna be super careful while we're doing this. We don't want it to rip because we worked really hard on this project so far. 
So let's try our best and go as slow as we need to. Right. I was definitely pushing it up here trying to fit this piece in and my paper ripped a little bit so we need to be extra careful to not rip our paper okay if your paper does rip it is totally fine you can glue it back together or tape it back together um, whatever we need to do we will do it to fix it because I know you've worked super hard on this project so far and if it was an accident, I'm sure that we can work something out for you, okay? Don't worry too much about it. We can fix it. All right, after you get done weaving these weft pieces into your loom until you have no more room up, the, up at the top, then you are done for this week. We'll be using this next time, so make sure you put it somewhere safe so you will be ready for next week. I seriously cannot wait to see how your weavings turn out this week. I know they're going to be amazing because you guys are amazing. All right, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.